Good Thursday. We've got a major weather pattern flip on the way across the United States over the next couple of days. And for some of you, that means some really warm temperatures. For others, it may mean a little bit cooler. And we're also watching Aaron still spinning out in the Atlantic. Here's a closer look at Aaron, which right now looking pretty healthy. You're still seeing that convection right near the center of circulation. Now, the center was more like here, and we saw that really strong thunderstorm activity just away from the center. But over the next couple of days, Aaron still expected to become a hurricane, and then at some point, a major hurricane, potentially once it gets just north of Puerto Rico, and then it starts to curve off to the north and northwest as we get toward the first of next week. There's still some questions as to how close this will come to the east coast. I don't think you let your guard down. I said this yesterday. Sure, the trend has been to keep it away, but I think you've got to watch this. Maybe not so far south as Florida, but especially here into the northeast, all it takes is is a window of opportunity and i want to show you that window that's sort of being hinted at here in the upper level pattern which will drive our weather over the next couple of weeks we're going to look at this for the rest of you too because i know not everyone's going to get impacted by this hurricane one thing that i am concerned about is the heat that's going to be building across the central plains as we move toward saturday into sunday as this strong upper level high starts to get established Pretty decent low off the west coast. That's going to bring in some cooler air to the northwest, some onshore flow, some showers, and here comes Aaron now moving uh, slightly off to the west, northwest, and eventually curving. Now, I want to show you the placement of this high. Now back across Texas, your winds in the upper levels will be like this, right? So we talked about this yesterday. Here's your trough up to the north. Winds flowing this way out of the west, northwest, and then curving off to the southwest and pulling everything north. Yesterday, this trough didn't look as strong, but what we've seen over the last several days is the weakening of this ridge here. It's opening up almost a hole for this storm to just kind of move through. Now, here's the operational run of the European from last night. It's still establishing that high across the west and southwest as we get toward Wednesday, and this will be the critical time period. The question is, will Aaron get scooped up? Will it pull it a little bit closer to the coast? This is the overnight run of the European, most of the models still taking Aaron out to sea. This is a really warm weather pattern too across the west, so I don't think we're done with the heat just yet. And it starts to also get hot across the Pacific Northwest. So we're definitely seeing a pattern flip for some of you, and then it flips back. Maybe the Southwest never really cools down, it's always hot. And this right here could be an impressive look as we head into the 24th, 25th, and 26th. And by this point, Aaron is completely out of here gone moving off to the northwest here are the ensemble plots the spaghetti plots if you will the the middle ground is somewhere here but there are still a few outliers trying to bring this very close to the coast this is the gfs from overnight also a little bit further to the west yesterday there was a little bit of a shift that if you go back and you look at the european from yesterday compared to yesterday's midday run to to over the overnight runs we've seen a slight shift to the east which is certainly good news for the folks along the East Coast, but there's still going to be some coastal impacts, I think, especially with wind and waves. Let's look at the upper, or, well, we've looked at the upper level pattern, but let's look at the precipitation laid on top of the upper level flow. The red lines here, some blue lines, that's your upper level height lines. Black, that's your surface pressures. You get the idea where your hurricane's going. There's your ridge building across the central U.S. and the West. We're going to have showers. I want to back this up because there is a weak disturbance drifting to the Northwest near the Texas-Mexico border. This right here, could bring some really heavy rain into Texas, something to keep an eye on as we head into the weekend. And now we're looking really wide here. Here comes Aaron. This is the operational GFS, which is going to really pull the storm to the north. If that happens, clearly that's good news, and that's the best case scenario. So let's hope that that comes to pass. It's hot across the west. You've got your ring of fire, everything going up and over this, but I think this is the weather geek moment of the day. Are you ready? Aaron starts to move north into the high latitudes. It becomes extra tropical. It loses its warm core characteristics. Now the storm's being driven by baroclinicity or baroclinic properties where those upper level winds are driving it. It's not, doesn't have that cold thunderstorm uh, core that you see in tropical systems. But look what happens as it approaches Greenland. Bang, you talk about a snowstorm. That's a raging storm in the North Atlantic at that point. And uh, we're also turning cold across Alaska too as we head toward you know, this week a little bit chilly too on, over the weekend. And look, some of the snow getting pretty low here across southern Alaska as well. And then chillier air moving in as we head into next week along the North Slope as we begin that 
change into fall, which is not too far away. And hey, if you like this kind of stuff, I hope you'll subscribe. About half of you watching these videos are not subscribers. So if you want to help the channel out, it's absolutely free. Free 99, as they say. So subscribe and come back. This is the severe weather risk today. It's going to be across the northern central plains. Some of these storms could get on the strong side. The big threat across this region will be strong, damaging winds. Also, we could see some hail. The tornado risk, not zero, but it's certainly there across parts of Minnesota and North Dakota. Let's start off across the west. We'll show this piece of energy as it kicks to the east, but we are dealing with some cooler weather across the Pacific Northwest. The rain chance is going up here. One thing, once the front moves through, we're going to be dealing with some showery conditions. You can see sort of the convective nature of these blobs of shower showing up on the future radar, and that just tells you there's some instability, some cooler air working in. Temperatures will be on the way down here, but pretty hot still, though, across the southwest, also the Central Valley of California. It's been hotter, but nothing to sneeze at. Further to the east, there's this really area that we're going to see the strong storms heading to this afternoon and this evening across North Dakota, moving into Minnesota. There could also be some storms further to the south that will linger into early Friday morning. And now look at the storms that really start to move north into parts of uh, Wyoming, Colorado. Definitely we're seeing a, a better chance of rain across this region heading into Friday night. And then that really, if you look at this, is moving up and over our high toward Wisconsin, also into the Great Lakes, so some showers possible here. There's your heat dome building today. More hot temperatures on the way for tomorrow. I'm going to push this out in time if you're looking ahead to the weekend. Highs in the 100s across Kansas as we move into Saturday, or at least very close to that, also into really Friday and into Saturday. And then by Sunday, the heat starts to build east. So now we're looking into Illinois, Missouri. We're getting hotter and hotter here with high temperatures possibly getting into the mid to upper 90s maybe approaching 100 in a few spots, even into Tennessee and Kentucky. Numbers here going up as well. To the east we go now. We are seeing a bit of a break here into parts of the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast where we had some heavy rain yesterday. Some of you enjoying a bit of precipitation, especially in the Maine where it's been relatively dry. As we move through today, there could be some more storms across down east Maine, uh, right along the coast too, and then into coastal North Carolina and Virginia. Otherwise, some cooler and some drier air. Not a lot cooler, but it's definitely not as... Uh, as active as what we saw over the last couple of days. And this is an interesting feature, this low spinning off the coast as we move towards Saturday. That is not Aaron. That is uh, something that I think you just want to keep a little bit of an eye on. At this point, not expected to develop into anything. The National Hurricane Center not highlighting it, but it's the time of year when you watch just about everything. Here's your temperatures today. Again, cooler across the Northeast. We were into the 90s in some areas yesterday. We're in the 80s. And then by tomorrow, the heat's starting to build back in from the Southwest especially into the Great Lakes region by the time we get into Saturday and Sunday. Look at these numbers into Chicago, pushing 90 again, even up toward Columbus and Cincinnati.